uh, in order. Madam Secretary, can you please call the roll? Director Ryder? Here. Director Chair. Director Taylor is absent, and Chair Harrington. Present. You have a director participating virtually? No, we do not. You have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Uh, is anyone registered for uh, to provide in-person or virtual oral testimony or submitted written testimony to be included in the record? We didn't receive any registrations nor any written testimony. Well, we're going to have a report right now from the Chief Corporate Compliance and Privacy Officer, Nicole Emerald, Chief Corporate Compliance and Privacy Officer, and she'll do the report. And I want to acknowledge uh, Director Curry is present. For the record, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Nicole Amiro, <laughs> Chief Compliance and Privacy Officer. Today we will review highlights from the first and second quarter of uh, the fiscal year beginning December 1st, 2023 through May 31st, 2024 for both the system compliance program and the county care health plan along with recoveries for county care and then I will provide a privacy update. Thank you. Okay, looking at the metrics for the system compliance program for the first six months of the county fiscal year 24, the metrics on the lower right hand compares the current activity to the last fiscal year. We've increased our contacts from um, 505 and last year it was 466. Um, we have uh, increase in the HIPAA related issues, um, uh, but we also have a large increase in the fraud, waste and abuse category from four to eight percent. Um, more contacts aren't necessarily a good thing. You have to delve into the data to determine if you're getting new issues so that the old ones are resolved. And in looking at the fraud and waste abuse category, we noticed that they, we have a lot of um, touches uh, dealing with um, uh, compliant workflows, billing workflows, and documentation for providers, uh, including ancillary providers. So that, that is a good sign. Um, Uh, on the county care side, again, from December uh, 23 to May 24, total contacts were slightly lower. This year, they were 376 compared to 431 last year. Um, on the fraud, waste, and abuse side, it was 162 last year with 110 this year. And on the privacy side, um, it, it is um, down slightly too. We think because of the increased education that we have been giving surrounding privacy and security, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. On the fraud, waste, and abuse side, many of the activities in this category are driven by the activity from the HFS OIG, which includes provider alerts and requests for information. Um, but there has been a, a singular focus on the OIG for the fraud, waste, and abuse with uh, COVID lab providers. And that focus has taken the OIG um, and our staff um, away from uh, focusing on other providers and with a concentration on the COVID labs. We have, I think what we're gonna see is on the next slide when we get to recovery is that a lot of our work with the COVID labs, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna see the recoveries on the preventative loss side because we have saved um, uh, uh, potential um, expenditures because of the efforts that we have been doing. Any questions on the county care side? Uh, next slide here, yep. Um, last, we'll look at recoveries, and this is for the nine months uh, following the state fiscal year, so that's July 1st, 2023 through March of 24. In, on the left-hand side, in total, we've recovered about 4.3 uh, million in retrospective recovery, recoveries. Last, we were, last year, we were at 7 million, so we are lower this year, and we, again, believe it's because of the focus on the COVID lab, fraud, waste, and abuse remediation. Um, on the right-hand side, we captured nearly 600,000 preventatively, meaning before the uh, captured before the funds went out the door. Our preventative loss numbers are lower this year than last. Um, we think in, in, in past this, a large part was due to our uh, pharmacy benefit manager met impact, but now we have C, uh, CVS. And so the recovery numbers are still lower. Um, we're approaching a year of implementation with CVS, so we're gonna ask them to take a look at this, but again, this is just 
um, uh, correcting mistakes before they, they uh, go out the door. So perhaps it's a good thing, but we, we will touch base with CVS to, uh, to uh, take a deeper dive there. On the privacy side, these are um, our major security breaches that we've had in the last year. Uh, I've brought the last four to your attention previously. We did have a new one, though, that's Superior Ambulance. They had a large breach <coughs> impacting uh, over 20 of their clients in the Chicagoland area. We use Superior Ambulance for non-emergency transport among uh, CCH locations. And our uh, impact, our patient impact was 3,588. They are in the process of uh, developing the notices that will go out to all impacted um, patients uh, very shortly. Any questions on the breaches? Uh, no questions, just a point of clarification. These were our vendors. They're all vendors, security. yes. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, all of these breaches happened on our vendors side, not, uh, did not impact CCH systems. So uh, recognizing an uptick in privacy issues related uh, across the, uh, the healthcare landscape, we have increased our HIPAA privacy education, providing supplemental privacy training, monthly lunch and learns, training addressing new regulatory changes for substance use disorders, uh, records or part two regulations, updated workflows for mental health and psychotherapy notes, and release of information. We have educated uh, department leaders on our new filming and recording policy updates, and we have email reminders and education for smart sheet users, as well as a HIPAA refresher for our, tr our lab managers. In addition to our annual privacy and security training, our security IT team also uh, requires regular cybersecurity training. We do short videos addressing a topic with competency questions at the end. Some of the topics are phishing, ransomware, and multi-factor authentication, uh, as an example. Any questions on the privacy education? Happy to answer any other questions. Hearing no questions, seeing no hands raised, I think that's it. Thank you. We'll now go to item four. Action items are two action items before us, the April 19, 2024 committee meeting minutes and the June 28, 2024 committee, me, committee meeting minutes. Uh, these were approved by the board at the April and July meeting, but are being presented for the committee's review and discussion if necessary. Are there any corrections needed? Correction. Hearing none. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes of the April 19, 2024 and the June 28, 2024 Audit and Compliance Committee meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Um, second. Um, I'm sorry. It, it can only be done by members of the committee, so the only members that are currently here are you and Director Ryder. So you could second it if I you will like. second that Thank motion. You. Will the secretary please take the roll? This doesn't require a roll. It doesn't require a roll. Okay. All Aye. Those? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. The motion carries. Uh, we will uh, now be going into a closed meeting. Uh, there are two reports. One is a report and a discussion. I will have a report from the director of internal audit and we'll have a discussion of personnel matters. Committee will now go into closed uh, session and have uh, a motion. Action is not anticipated to be taken in the open session after the closed meeting has adjourned. Can I have a motion to, to go into a closed meeting pursuant to the following exceptions to the Illinois Open Meetings Act, 5 ILCS, I 120-2C and 1 and 29. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. When we do the roll call. Uh, roll call vote on the motion to go into closed session. Roll call motion on the vote on the motion to go into closed session. Aye or nay. Director Ryder? Aye. Director Taylor is absent and Chair Harrington. Aye. You have two yeas and one absent. We'll now go into closed session. What I do is I usually just